welcome everybody to this latest episode of Really Dicey. I'm here with Babs and this is Manny. We're here to talk about Terra Oblivion by Terra Publishing, um, a very interesting 98 page book. So I was very excited because this is not only made by a person of color, but it is a retro future. It's almost like a diesel punk type of thing, but it's echo punk. And even sci fi is not really handled very much in TTRPG, it usually goes to fantasy ways. So when I saw the initial image, I was like, oh my god, yes. Like, I was all about it. I felt really strong vibes of uh, Avatar the Last Airbender, the, the Dragon Prince, uh, a lot of which, where I could say the new wave of animation coming out uh, since well, that, that Avatar kind of broke the doors through. And it's, uh, it, it's, it's, it's a beautiful piece of work. Uh, I love the art. I mean, the art grabbed me right away. It's, it's so well done and this, it is this, Right, like this, it's not exactly anime, but it, it sort of feels like it. To let our viewers know, this book does not contain the mythical D6 rules. You have to buy that separately. Um, the But the mythical D6 is very easy to find and very easy to learn also. It's just all D6s. Um, the idea is simply that, uh, let's say your goal is uh, 12 and you have to roll 3d6 based on your attribute you roll it and if you roll above it you you, you do so and you you have a special d6 that you pick out that whenever that rolls a six you keep rolling it and if you get a six you keep rolling it and you just keep adding the amount going back to the this the the book itself um yeah yeah i, I i'm very intrigued by the the premise uh which is you're in another world you're in terra and flukes kind of um power everything it's 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 part it's the world itself it it uh it's your, your food uh your medicine uh your technology and pretty much um sort of mimicking what we're going through nowadays is that it's solely the people of terror are solely have took advantage of the what they had available the planet gave them and now it's they're sort of destroying themselves i thought it was fun and interesting and what definitely pulled me into this world was the story with like um how we're slowly destroying the world that 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 hit me in the heart place but how all of the technology is enmeshed with living things like there's not a piece of technology that you see that does not have something organic to us like oh this is so creepy i adore it yeah i i it it feels steampunk but it's not steampunk it's it it doesn't feel like like it's super sci-fi punk. either. Diesel punk, would you call it? Yeah. Because um, it definitely has the era style, but with the like I said, the organic pieces. Like there's a um a jetpack that looks like it has a squid that's squished into it and it flies. And some of the spacecraft are just like look like these gigantic monsters that are it looks like a sci-fi version of the turtle that is the world in certain mythologies except it's lifting a spaceship instead of a part of the planet. It's very fascinating. I love it. The, the creators of this book have done a great job. They also have a story in it, so it kind of really pulls you in to what the conflicts are in this in this planet. There was six colonies, and now there's five, and that's kind of a mystery in itself. Um, that's for your characters to kind of explore to find out why. Um, there's, a, of course, just like, um, again, it, I keep comparing it to Avatar because I just keep these certain little themes come back or the idea of a of a that, that one of the colonies is pretty much a, an evil empire that's um, already taken over one of the other colonies and um, that, that, and it gives you a lot of resources to, to role play in that scenario. It reminds me a little bit of Dune. I'm not very far into Dune, but definitely has that. It has a little bit of uh, with the religion stuff. It makes me think of Fifth Element especially if you look into the cover of chapter two, like that reminds me of the aliens that you see in the very beginning of the fifth element. What are your thoughts about how, about making characters in this world? It's interesting. It has a good amount of information on like what the spy is or what this class is. And it has like the chart that's very neatly organized, but it, it's, it's not like the indie that shows the type of attacks that you could possibly have. Yeah, I thought I I love that. There's just uh, six classes, and then there's there's a couple of a lot of options available to customize them, make them different. Um, uh, a, a lot of interesting information about uh, symbi symbiosis, you know, uh, being being involved with the flukes and how that affects your your characters, character making. Um, uh, I I they have a great list of equipment. Um, 
in this book, vehicles, uh, and they all look great. Again, the art is, is superb, and it, it's they do a good job in not making this look like a clone of anything that I've, I've seen before. What particularly grabbed me about their art is they utilize a lot of photographic styles, which got me in my photographer heart. Like if you go to page uh, 24, they use the Dutch angle and they use it just enough. Like they didn't go like full angle, like the world is slightly tilted and that indicates that there's some movement going on. And I forget what the other page is, but it looks like they have used the fisheye lens, which you commonly see uh, used and abused with like skater videos, like skateboarders and BMX bikers to get like as much as possible. And there's that slightly curviness in the illustrations. Like that is, that is very unique. And also the illustrations throughout will show characters in conflict, which seems more, oh, and the page I'm talking about is page 13 with the fisheye lens. Like if you go to page 10, you see someone with her back against the, um, against the fence. And it's at like taken at an angle where it's slightly angled and you see the people approaching her and you see that she's in danger and you don't see how she's going to get out of it. It's a very dynamic photo and there's like a, a bird that's flying. It's like that is all, whoever took this was a photographer or a videographer and knows how to put actions into a still shot. And I was like, oh my God. And even going beyond photographically, they show this bizarre technology and practical use. Like there's some farming equipment where a guy's in this automatic mechanic farming equipment and he's floating like 10 feet off the ground and they act like it's normal but it's the most bizarre thing I've seen this week and I love it <laughs> you know what that that's a really good I didn't think of the art that way the way you described it because it it does feel different it doesn't feel like your typical like drawn stuff I've seen some RPG books do like characters or vehicles it, it seems very I don't know um uh like the same pose the same style same viewpoint all the time <laughs> And this feels like this is like stills from a movie. Um, it's just like different angles, different perspectives. Um, yeah, whoever did this has been the principal photographer on some project or actually multiple pro projects because this is dead on. Like if you put, jump to page 11, you have the character. She's very far to left. She's almost off screen and she's looking further off screen. And behind her, you see this scene. You see like this beached whale ship being repaired by another ship and everything is actually to scale um, if these things were real. And they have a very good sense of foreground, middle ground, and background and beyond background. It's like this is this is advanced stuff for a for a TTRPG rule book. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this this has I I I really like it. I wish um um uh, I could take this to my local library and I wish it was, you know, which COVID wasn't here. So I could uh, show this to, to kids because I know um, uh, uh, I think a lot of like like young people will really enjoy it. Although I, I do want to say that this is not just for kids. It's not a, a kid, like children book RPG or anything like that. It's it's uh, there's some heavy themes in this book. And I think uh, whether you're 14 or 45, uh, I think you would do a love to play in this world i'm excited because i i've been i've been fans of um uh, again i keep mentioning avatar dragon prince and i think those are very interesting worlds uh where it's very role play driven um and i think this book really gets that feeling um uh from those type of animation and uh it will make a system that's very playable uh the only like minor strike i would have against this is it does have a lot and that is great, but it doesn't have anything like maps or anything. Um, and I'm not familiar with this world. So if I was a new player, I would flounder a little bit because I don't know how much of my own creativity I would have to lend to this. Like I would have to do some serious studying and be like, okay, this is the map that I'm going to look for. And these are the little um, shops or whatever, like in Lost Mine of Fendelver, which I'm going to speak about in these interviews a lot because that's what I have experience with. It has a general map of like the town or whatever. And this doesn't really have that. There's a single map and it's the least illustrated thing in this entire book, which I would understand because at the time that this would have been created, everything that we have now, like the current version of Incarnate mm -hmm. or Hero, not Hero Forge, um, Dragon Draft and Aether Draft, those weren't really out yet or didn't have their current updates. I think Dungeon Draft is new as of a couple of months ago. So unfortunately this missed out on having those generated 
maps and this is kind of like um oh crap we didn't have a map let's whip something up in photoshop and put it in the page yeah it's a uh, page uh, 50. okay yeah I, I, good point i i did notice that that the map of the world is not as detailed as the illustrations that they show with the vehicles and, and weapons and so forth. Um, I Hopefully, at the next book they make, I hope they will do maybe more maps. Uh, I would like to see like a map of a, a really in-depth map of a, of a sky, they, they call it sky spheres, so the, the cities and the skies that uh, that they have made for their capitals, um, for each of the, each of the um, colonies. Um, I think uh, I would love to see something like that, something very more in depth about that. Just because it's such a, it's so so well um, drawn, I'd like to see more information about it. Uh, how does the uh, economy work and so forth? Although there's good information about basic information about that, but I'd like to see more. But again, it's only 98 pages. Yeah, it's actually bigger than some of the books that I have. I've downloaded some um, things from like Drive Through RPG, and if this is sold through like Drive Through RPG or DMs Guild. They do have the option, I mean, after the Kickstarter is done, they do have the option to update the PDF and people can get the update for free so they can update the map if they wanted to. And the people who already paid for it, they can just re-download it. I've done, that's what happened with a few of the guys that I've gotten. And I could see that definitely working out in their favor. And I would absolutely love to see updates. Like, like you said, of the world, of the technology, uh, they just have so much. And I would just love to like talk to them about like, well, how did you decide that this creature was going to merge with this creature to do X, Y, Z? Because it's, it's so great. It's, it's, it's on the verge of body horror. And I have a particular love for body horror <laughs> in my media. <laughs> um, yeah, I, honestly, I, if they were to make novels based on this, I would read it just because it's really okay. intriguing. Okay, so uh, again, there are um, uh, six classes, um, the council, uh, the, which is pretty much a political class. Uh, there's the uh, the handler, which is sort of the, well, I don't want to say psychic class, but it's pretty much the bridge between uh, a person and uh, the flukes, the, 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 these uh, microscopic or, or very complex, I should say, very complex beings that make up the world. Um, there's also the, the soldier, the spy, you know, very self-explanatory, uh, the academic, um, the scholar of the group, uh, the guiding way. And if I could choose to be one of the classes and not be like a meat shield or bullet fodder, uh, I'd probably be a handler because it'd be pretty on par with me. E either that or an academic. I, I would have picked handler also just because it's it's the most unique class out of them. I mean, so I've been soldiers, I've been spies, but, uh, but a psychic in between, uh, like part mechanic and healer, that's that's intriguing. Yeah, it definitely looks fun. And also the character art kind of looks like my body type. So I was like, yeah, it's literally me. <laughs> so uh, if, if, you, if you had time um, and, and probably the Mythic D6 uh, core book, would you play this game? Oh, yeah. I would love to just delve into this and kind of do a deep dive into some of the, the, the echo technology, the technology. <laughs> and just see how my players would like to um, engage with them. Like, I don't know if they would choose a good side or an evil side because I, I would just kind of lead them through circumstances and see if they would work with the Republic or with the people and see how things turn out. <laughs> I don't like suppose that the players are always going to be um, heroes. I just I just give them a situation, let them re react, and it's like, all right, this is this is the route that you take. Well, that, that, that's good GMing. Um, um, I personally myself, I I want I I want to play this as well. And what's great, and this is a different perspective, is because I played Star Wars the D6 system many years ago, and I and I, I like the system a lot. And sometimes I get tired of Star Wars, uh, but I like the system, the rule system a lot. And this world will be a, a good. Uh, substitute um, to play that system to something very different and much more current and uh, and possibly a lot more fun as well. Okay, all right, yeah, yeah. This this has our, our highest praise. Uh, congratulations, uh, Capera Publishing. You did a great job. I, I wish you this company very um, great success. Um, uh, anything? Any last I words? See, I would love to see more. Um, I might look into Mythic six and potentially run it in the future i'm doing a lot of games in the future <laughs> for a while so 
and if, if I can't learn the Mythic 6, I'll, I'll try my best to convert this to 5e and, and get it running with my friends. Because this is absolutely lore that I am adoring, and I adore the art style, and I want to share it with my friends. I feel the same way. All right, excellent. Uh, viewers, what do you think? Let us know what you think in the comments below, and um, have a great day.